visitors of Hollywood. If any of you came out here tonight to enjoy yourself uh, celebrating Halloween. You know, Halloween is actually a celebration of the dead. You know, Satan is glorified in the celebration of the dead, the celebration of evil, the celebration of, of, of the devil himself. And Satan thinks he's sovereign, that is, that he is Lord over death and what is evil. That's why there's such a popularity of Harry Potter today and shows like Charm, Sabrina the Witch, things like this. You know, uh, the religion Wicca, which is about witchcraft, okay, that, that multiplied in numbers from 1997 when Harry Potter came out. When J.K. Rowling wrote the book Harry Potter, in 1997, there's only a few thousand Wiccans. Within about six or seven years, they had tripled in their numbers. So a lot of you people love Harry Potter, but yet Harry Potter has nothing to do with God. It doesn't glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. You do yourself much harm when you watch this kind of stuff. You take that into your soul and into your mind and into your thoughts. But God said, it's not what goes into the body that defiles a person, but what comes out, what comes out of the heart. Evil, adultery, murders, fornications, drunkenness, that's what comes out of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, you see. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What God wants is a pure heart. Do you have a pure heart today? Ask yourself that. The only way you can get a pure heart is to have it washed in the blood of Christ. To be born again into God's kingdom. That means you must repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. This faith is not of yourself, it's a gift. It says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, man has a problem. You have a problem tonight, and that's with your maker. There's a big gulf between you and God that separates you, it's called sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What is sin? Sin is rebellion. Sin is iniquity. It's lawlessness. What is sin? Sin is a transgression of God's law. It's murder. The sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. It's breaking the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's breaking the eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you desire anything before God, if you hold up anything above God in your heart or your affections or desires, that's what God calls an idol. And God hates that. He's very displeased with that, okay? It could be your Hollywood idol. It could be your favorite actor or actress. Your musician, your favorite rock band, your hip-hop band. It doesn't matter. It could be a dead idol. It could be Elvis Presley. You see, Hollywood makes millions of dollars off of dead people. Because Hollywood is full of the demonic, the occult. Okay? Now why did God create you? God created you for His glory. For thou hast created all things for His honor and glory. That's why He created them. Read Revelation 4.11. Let me quote to you the most famous verse in the Bible. John 3.16. Anybody know that? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Right? And whosoever believeth in him, in Christ, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, through him, that's Jesus, might be saved. He that believeth not, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Why is he condemned? Because he does not believe in the only begotten Son of God. You see, there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, folks. Hare Krishna won't save you. Mohammed won't save you. He's in the grave. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who resurrected from the dead on the third day, can give you eternal life. But you must turn from your sins. You must be sorry for your sins. You must repent from your pride, your arrogance, your hatred, your prejudice, your biases, your lust, your greediness, your selfishness. Yeah. We're all by nature selfish, aren't we? 
We all love ourselves more than other people. That's why there's wars, that's why there's fighting, that's why there's murders, that's why there's theft. You got a greedy heart, so you want to steal something instead of paying for it. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. If you break these laws of God, you're condemned. There's only one person that ever kept the law of God perfectly, that's Jesus Christ. He came and paid the penalty for sinners like you. But it's not enough to believe that. You must repent and have a changed mind. You must turn to the Lord as your only hope. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus. He's the only way. He's not one of many ways. He's not one of many truths. He's the only truth. Truth is not relative. Truth is absolute. God is absolute truth. You see, you were not created. You, you did not evolve from a monkey. Charles Darwin was a totally mixed up man and apostate. He didn't invent evolution. He only made it popular. Evolution has been around for several thousand of years. But it's taught in the public school system that you're an animal. But you're not an animal. You're created in the image of God. You're a man. You're a woman. And God expects you to act like a man and a woman. All right? Ah, he said grab me. So I encourage you to read your Bible. Quit letting it collect dust. Everybody has a Bible, I'm sure. You, you have to. You must read your Bible. Okay, for all scriptures given by inspiration of God, it is profitable for doctrine, truth, correction, and instruction in righteousness. I got the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. Word of God. You see, you must believe that you are a creation of God. Those that come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Hey, without faith in hey, you, you must believe God. You must have faith. Faith is a gift. You don't have it of yourself. Pray for faith. Pray for the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You see, you are at war with God, young man. Young woman, you're at war with God by nature. You're born a sinner, and the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. And the death that God has in view is eternal damnation. It's not just physical death. Yeah, we're all going to die physically. Adam died physically. He lived to be 930 years old, but he died spiritually. He lost the Holy Spirit. So you must repent. And God, that's you too. You're a sinner too. What are you going to do on judgment day, young man? What are you going to do? Yeah, you see, you're probably drunk right now. Drunkards, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. You must repent from your drunkenness. Don't take pride and satisfaction in it, my friend. People die at young age of alcoholism. Wait, wait, wait. Come here. Your liver will go out on you. Your body will rot on you. You must take care of your body. It's great. You're created in the image of God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Why will you fill it with drugs and alcohol? Alcohol is a drug. It's a depressant. You know how many people die every year from drunk drivers, from driving under the influence? Thousands. Thousands of people die. They never thought they would drive their last vehicle. But they're on their way home from a party and they die. They got hit or they fell asleep or they ran into somebody else, maybe they killed somebody. God wants us to be sober. He says be sober, be vigilant for your adversary the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's right. But now today, you are in one of two kingdoms. You're in the kingdom of God or you're in the kingdom of Satan. Most of you are in the kingdom of Satan. You serve your father the devil. That's a serious matter. The only way you can get out of that kingdom and into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of righteousness, is to be born again of the Spirit, to be born above, to be born from heaven, to be made alive by the Holy Ghost. It's a work of God. It's a supernatural work of the Spirit. You cannot do it yourself. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus didn't understand what the new birth was. He said, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? No, Nicodemus. 
That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell from where it comes or goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. God is sovereign, folks. He saves whom He pleases. It's not just a matter of asking Jesus into your heart. No. Many of you did that, and look where you're at today. You're still lost and in your sin. You're under a false conversion, a false assurance. Maybe you go to a false church. A church that preaches the word of word of faith ministry or prosperity gospel. That's a false gospel. God never says he wants you wealthy with material goods. He wants you poor and broken. A broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. Are you broken today? Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. Blessed are they that mourn. Are you mourning over your sin? Pray that God would give you a new heart, folks. You need your heart washed from your sins, and you need the law of God. Listen to me. You need the law of God written on your heart, because you'll never be able to keep it apart from God's mercy.